your brother Lenry Adinekon welcoming you to the Really Really Knowing God channel as I lead this fellowship of information and inspiration in the knowledge of God. So powered by the Pastor Lenry Adinekon Center for Inspiration. <music> This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of Jesus. By sharing truth this morning on how to buy a prophet, coming from Nehemiah chapter 6, 9 to 14, by the grace of God. Let us pray together. Father God, we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise in the name of Jesus Christ. God, you are a God who is there for your own people and that has been our experience we so testify in the name of jesus christ as we share together this morning oh god we receive help from you and give you thanks in advance thank you father god in jesus name we pray amen and amen hallelujah Nehemiah. so we do nine again for they were they all were trying to make us afraid saying their hands would be weakened and in the work and it will not be done now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Afterwards, I came to the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, son of Mehatabel, who was a secret informer. And he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple, and let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, that night they will come to kill you. <clears throat> and I said, Should such a man as I flee? And who is there, such as I, um, who I will go into the temple to save his life. I will not go in. Then I perceived that God had not sent him at all, but he has pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobias and Sambalat had hired him. For this reason, um, he was hired that I should be afraid and act that way and sin, so that they might have cause for an evil report and they might reproach me. My God, remember Tobias and Sambalat according to their works, and the prophet Nodiah and the rest of the prophets who would have made me afraid. Okay. Probably are going to overlap again from 14 the next time around. I don't know. Let's do this together. So, quickly, <clears throat> the A part of 9 was where we stopped the other time. It says, For they were all trying to make us afraid so that they are, our hands would be weakened and the work would stop. Can we say the progression? What fear does? The first thing, when fear comes in and then it moves on to the next thing, and that is weakness. And then finally, to the last thing, stoppage. That's it. Now, this thing that's about building the wall, but any aspect of our life is the same progression. Okay? The fear comes in and then it leads to weaknesses. Weaknesses here and there. You know, this one says our hands will be weakness. At times it's your mind that becomes weakened. At times it's your resolve that becomes weakened. It's your determination that becomes weakened. It's your um your your push that becomes weakened and all that you know so the first thing is the 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 light gets in place number two the weakening okay it gets in place of whatever it is that's applicable in your particular case and finally the stoppage of what you have begun to do or what you plan to do it keeps the plan it keeps the process it keeps the progress you know and all that that's what fear does honestly fear is a bad thing and we should not allow that you know in our lives in any way in jesus mighty name so the other part of it now he prayed a prayer he says uh, so that the word now therefore oh god strengthen my hands in other words lord so strengthen me that even my own weak will be stronger than their own strong. Hallelujah. Even at my weakest point, I will still be bigger or stronger than their own strength over there. That's the prayer. And uh, uh, it's a good one. Hallelujah. Then he says, I now came to the house of uh, Shemaiah, the son of Delia, son of Mehtabel, who was a secret informer. Well, in King James, it says, who was shut up. And I, will, I want to explain that very quickly. And then he, he made his way. Let's meet together in the house of God within the temple. Let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, they are going to come to kill you at night. Now, this person, um, he calls him secret informer. King James says he was shut up. When they say somebody was shut up, it means the person was under quarantine or under house arrest, you know, is, is, is one of the two. Nevertheless, this person behaved um, as if he was on the side of... Uh, the Nehemiah and that's why Nehemiah responded and went to his place okay remember they've been trying to call him you know to come and hold the meeting at one place or the other he didn't respond to anybody but they responded to this person in particular because this person had um, presented as as if they are on on his own side so he responded and went to this person and then what's what did he have to say let us meet together in the house of God can you remember now that there is now trying to look uh, suggest what should be a safe place um 
um, not quite the place suggested by an enemy now, a place where Nehemiah would consider to be safe, you know, let us meet there. If you don't go to meet there, they are going to kill you tonight. That's why he says, let, let us close the door so that they are, because they are coming to kill you. Indeed, at night, they will come to kill you. So this guy was making another suggestion, a place where he thought Nehemiah would consider safe, Okay, and uh, remember that he has posed or he has presented as if, you know, always been on Nehemiah's side. So that uh, Nehemiah should typically, normally buy into what he was suggesting. And, but Nehemiah's answer was epic. Should such a man as I flee? And who is there such as I? Who would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Hmm. This is interesting. That verse 11 chose principle. The man, because of his principle, I was not going to run either to the temple or anywhere for that matter. A person like me should not, should not be the person running. I should not because of my life. Hallelujah. Now, this is somebody who has, laid his, who has said that, look, I've given my life to this work. And therefore, running is out of it. That is the principle. Okay, the same way that some people, you, have give, um, you are so principled on the matter that when some other suggestions are coming up, they can't fly because of your principle upon which you are not ready to, um, to compromise or which you are not ready to bend or which you are not ready to, to yeah, you know. Uh, it says, look, should such a person as I run, me run, so am I supposed to be the kind of person they will find hiding in the temple because of his own life? Now, these are principles, life compass, you know, that this man has. And that is why he didn't fall for that temptation. Because it came from a man who was supposed to be on his side. And he was giving what looked like a good suggestion. He's in the temple. You know, not any, you know, other place. But still, that principle made him say, temple or no temple, I am not running. Because you see, running is running. Hiding is hiding. Uh, fear is fear. Being afraid is being afraid. So, <clears throat> whether I'm being afraid to go into the temple or running from these characters, it will never happen to me. Praise the Lord. So, he stood upon that principle. And that was why I didn't go there. But right after that, you know, statement of it, look at the next verse. It says, Then I perceived that God had not sent him at all, but he has pronounced your prophecy against me because he's been bought. <clears throat> Excuse me. He must have observed somebody language after making that statement. Maybe that statement through um, this, the proponent of balance. He, you know, I don't know what happened, but he must have. He says, then I perceived. And after making that statement, after standing on his principle, he then perceived. He must have observed somebody language. Like that countenance fell or whatever. He must have observed something. He said, oh, <clears throat> so this man is a double agent. May God save us from double agents. A double agent is one who's supposed to be on your side, but is actually spying for the other side as well, or working on behalf of the other side as well. That was what this guy was. Now, he was somebody who was either quarantined or under house arrest and whatever. You will not expect people in that kind of circumstance to be double agents, but look at him. That's what has happened here. Now, Nehemiah said, I perceive that indeed God has not sent him, but well, these guys had bought him. He must have seen something. But you see, if he didn't stand on principle, he may never have observed that thing. That's where I'm going. I mean, never. It was after making his statement that no, I'm not running. That was any observed that oh, this man you've been bought. He never knew until after that statement. May God help us in Jesus' mighty. So the next thing we talk about is how to buy a prophet. Now these things have been happening from the days of uh, Balaam up till this moment. Some people will manage to convince a prophet that these are the benefits of him being bought. These are the things that, is, that are going to be for him if he can just... It says he pronounced this prophecy. It was a fake prophecy. They will kill you tonight if you do not go into the temple. Okay? Just like some people will do today. They've been bought. Some, some, some big person has bought them and has made them to open their mouth and be saying things. We had a lot of these things. You know, whenever elections come up, oh, all kinds of people will begin to say all kinds of things. Money. Is talking now. What happens? What do they do to these prophets? They make them understand what are the um, the benefits of uh, making this pronouncement on their behalf. What is going to come to them? Uh, and that uh, 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 look, all of us have all of us are 
uh, have weaknesses. Yeah, everybody has his own weakness. It's not that I'm such a bad person. Everybody has his own weakness. You know, therefore, if you say this on my behalf, it's going to be your own benefit. And then after considering it, they, they fall for it. They go in that direction and say things that uh, God has not asked them to say. And say things uh, completely from inside of them because of their own personal benefit and all those things. So, it's not as if people just come and say, oh, you're a prophet, I take this money and go on. No, it takes a little bit of convincing them. That's what happens. It takes a bit of convincing them. It, at times, they may need to come up to two, three times before they manage to convince the, the prophet to, you know, go out and do whatever it is they are doing for them. And of course, they are likely to go for the one that was already vulnerable. Like this man was either quarantined or under house arrest, he was already vulnerable. There are some other, you know, forms of vulnerability, maybe financial, um, um, lack of financial capacity, for example. Or, you know, at times some people are just looking for connection so that, you know, their children can, you know, get some things out of there, if not them directly, all kinds of situations where they find themselves. But this particular man was shut up. He was somebody that was vulnerable in one way or the other or needed. Um, you know, it was a need in some way or the other. Yeah, those are the people they go for. So also, uh, it happens even today. Therefore, they are man of God, they are prophets. Know that there's no need of yours that God cannot meet, that God will not meet. It's better for you to stand on your principles and your life compasses um, rather than to fall for some of these things. And after it has happened, they have paid you off. The same people who said very fine, fine things to you when they came up to three, four times, you will not see them again for the, until the next three and a half years and then they will be back again, you know, and all that. May God help us in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you very much for sharing time with us here. And um, I think I should just leave it. Well, you just mentioned that uh, it was hard so that I could be afraid. That fair thing again. And sin. Look at that. I could be afraid and sin. You know, that was going to hide was a sin as far as he was concerned. Man was such a principled human being. May God help us in Jesus' mighty name. Have a very, very, very fine time today in Jesus' name. God bless you.